talk some more about the action as we head into the bell. Stocks have fallen a little bit here since we started the show. Joining me, Bob Icino, founder and chief strategist of Path Trading Partners. Uh, Bob, it's been an interesting session trying to buy the dip on stocks, but I don't know. It looks like we may not quite make it positive into the close. What do you think? Well, a couple of things. I mean, I think stocks should weather this storm pretty well. You know, I've said before that economists are sort of in charge of deciding what the Fed should do. And I'm a strategist, so I'm trying to decide what the Fed will do. And I also think we're talking a little too much about what the Fed will do lately, because you've got, in my opinion, an economy that's reflating. So more inflation and more growth. We do have some cracks, but certainly it didn't show in today's jobs number. So considering that today's jobs number was the dominant data, a rally should happen over the next day or so, although we're pretty data heavy next week. Yeah, CPI seems like maybe should put a little bit of a lid on how frothy we can get here. It was interesting today to see gold really get walloped and then Bitcoin turn around in the middle of the session. Take me through kind of those moves and how you're looking at those, Bob. Well, for both of those assets, first of all, I, I'm, I can't see a reason not to be long them, especially Bitcoin. Mm. I mean, earlier this week, we saw a two-day total of about $1.37 billion into Bitcoin ETFs. That now represents about 4.75% of total program supply, the 21 million number, and right around 5% of the 19.7 million that's been issued so far. And the amazing thing about those numbers to me is, first of all, the ETFs have only been around for about five months. And second of all, if you did a survey, I bet you're still below 10% of investors having any Bitcoin at all, whether it's ETF or otherwise. So even a modest like 1% to 2% allocation by a big chunk of those individuals and or institutions, um, that's a pretty big impact to an asset that we know is at least going to be around for a little while. Um, it may take convincing arguments that it's going to be around for a long time to change anyone's mind about those investments. Now, from the gold perspective, I see four possible situations. You tell me which one more is more likely. Stagflation, where we have a weakening economy and stronger inflation. Reflation, which is what I believe, which we have a stronger economy and strengthening inflation. Soft landing or recession. Mm -hmm. I'd say recession is out of the question. Soft landing is the least likely. The other two drive gold higher. That's a pretty important uh, update to your model, right? Because I, I know that in our conversations over the last kind of nine months, you were a little worried about the uh, recession side. So to kind of err yes. more on the kind of a stagflation or reflation argument, um, I guess you've been impressed by how resilient the economy has been? Well, sure. And we don't talk every week anymore. My, yeah. my view changed a while ago, but I, I remember a Bloomberg headline that said a recession is now a 100% probability. <laughs> yeah, that's what he said about That should have been my buy signal. Anytime somebody, not, not picking on Bloomberg, but anytime somebody says 100%, sure. that is never correct with markets. Yeah, true. Uh, okay, so for gold then, uh, as long as uh, we don't have like a massive move in rates, you think it normalizes? I think so. And, and what you mentioned about CPI matters, but I think the SCP matters more than anything, because this particular non-farm payrolls number could change the tone of the meeting or the planned tone of the meeting. They could actually say, you know what, or Powell could say, which is what matters, that maybe we won't hike at all this year. Maybe it has to wait till next year. Or he can say we're still on our schedule and we still think it's appropriate. If he says that, guess what's happening to gold? I don't think I have to tell anybody. So, uh, okay. Right now, a bit of a pain trade in all the metals. So let's come back to BTC for a sec, uh, as I feel like gold's a little bit more straightforward. For Bitcoin, there's a pressure of a uh, halving that still is happening, though, where miners are uh, going to have to see price move pretty quickly here, because the standard is that it booms 52 weeks after we got that halving from earlier this year. So what are the technicals that need to fall into place here to uh, make that math make sense for them? Well, I actually wrote a piece on that recently, probably about a month or so ago, about the halving and how every halving has been a bullish um, event. The last one, it took some time for the bullishness to happen. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it, it's not necessarily, in my opinion, a sell the event kind of a thing. It lessens the amount of Bitcoin that comes into circulation, and we will lose some miners. Um, but the other miners will get more because they'll be receiving. Uh, 
uh, allocations more often. So I, I still think that the having is at its core a bullish event. When you're looking at a situation where something reduces supply, unless you tell me demand is going to reduce just as much, and what I just told you about the Bitcoin out there with the ETFs, I don't think that's going to be the case. It may not happen right away, but it's likely to be a bullish event, in my opinion. ETFs continue to be rocking, uh, pulling it in, uh, but we haven't been able to hit that new high despite stocks new high. Do you think it needs to happen soon for Bitcoin to avoid a rejection? You know, I used to say that um, usability was the key, right? And I say that acceptability is the key now. When the vast majority of investors accept that this asset is going to be here, they're going to flood probably mostly into those ETFs, which uh, you know, I remain in the camp that Bitcoin is better, just like my crude oil versus crude stocks thing that I've said to you for years. Um, if you want exposure to Bitcoin, you want to own Bitcoin in your own wallet. But most people will go to the ETFs, and I still think that's the trigger. Okay. Uh, when do you think we need to get that break out? Is there a timeline here? Is there a window that needs to happen in? No, I don't think so, because the inevitability of the 21 million being the last ones issued is happening. So it's it's just a matter of whether we get there sooner or later. And again, look, there are risks as far as I'm concerned. I don't want anyone to think that I'm saying this is a no risk trade. That would be the equivalent of Bloomberg saying 100 percent probability sure. of a recession. So, you know, there's still a risk. If you see a push toward central bank digital currencies, I would then worry about my Bitcoin holdings. Um, but President Trump is committed to let Bitcoin run if he were to uh, win re-election. So that gives you four years. Mm. And uh, does, how does that factor in? Think the people are thinking about that in the back of their mind? Probably way back in their, in their uh -huh. big brains, which I don't have. It's just I don't have enough room for that right now. All right. Well, it seems like you do believe in the scarcity argument as a bullish catalyst. Uh, I got a scarce it's amount of socks argument. in my closet, Bob. You want any of those? Do I want any what? I got a scarce amount of dirty socks in my closet. You want any of those? Well, if you can find me about 500,000 YouTubers, it'll take them. Hell yeah, I'll take your socks. <laughs> okay. All right. I'm not sure what that part means. <laughs> All right. See you, Bob. Have a great weekend, sir. Bob Acino, founder, chief strategist, path trading partners.